The final episode of Attack on Titan is finally here, and it brings much needed context to previous events. It also brought back beloved characters like Sasha, and unraveled an evil and mysterious creature Levi has never met before. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Honestly, there is so much to talk about, so let's get right into it. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I am planning some very unique videos that I'll talk about at the end of this video, so remember to watch till the end, and also to enable all notifications from my channel. And now, let's dive right into our final episode, Dawn of Humanity, covering chapters 123, 130, and a single frame from chapter 131. It begins with a chapter that was currently missing, chapter 123, Island Devils. To make things clear right from the start, the first part of this episode takes place during the four years time skip. This is after the scouts captured the boats of Marley and Union Coupon and the volunteers helped them develop Paradis, but before the attack on Iberio where Sasha got killed. This episode is extremely important because it finally shows us why this group is so different from other people on the island, and we will talk about that soon. The episode begins with chapter 123, as the scouts arrive at Marley by boat to meet Union Coupon. It also skips on the opening song, which is always a sign for a special episode. The first thing to notice is Mikasa's internal monologue, as she is feeling confused about Eren. If Eren hasn't changed, then what part of Eren has she been seeing all this time? I also loved the complete contrast between her white outfit and Eren's complete black suit. Right from the start, Sasha and Connie almost disclose the fact that they are from the island. Those little moments of childish ignorance fit Sasha and Connie so well, and it could be expected, as this is the first time they have ever been outside of their island. Later, in one of the most adorable scenes ever, we get both of them, alongside Hanji, trying to interact with a car and feed it carrots. We need to remember that Marley is basically 100 years more advanced than Paradis, so the most simple things seem amazing to our group as they go around the different stands and try out the different foods, also giving us the most awaited panel of Mikasa enjoying ice cream. Unlike the rest of the group, it seems that Eren doesn't share the same excitement, even though he always dreamed of seeing the outside world. He saw some of it through his father's memories, and he acknowledges there are so many things beyond the walls, but it is clear that he is disappointed about something. Meanwhile, in the background, Levi faces an evil and unknown creature. Lucky for him, a dead clown would be very bad for the scouts, so this clown gets to live another day. While the scouts walk around trying not to draw too much attention, Levi spots a little kid that stole Sasha's wallet. As a crowd gathers around them, we get to see how the people of Marley don't look kindly at strangers. They suspect him to be a refugee from one of Marley's enemy states, and they start talking about ways to deal with him. Some say they should throw him to the sea, others say they should cut off his hand. There is obviously hate towards strangers on Marley, but it gets even worse when some people suggest that the boy could even be a subject of Ymir. We also get a new detail about worldwide blood tests going on in order to identify subjects of Ymir. Luckily for the little boy, our group is not so keen on watching kids get lynched. Levi tells the crowd the boy is Sasha's little brother, and when that doesn't work, he grabs the kid and tells the group to run. So much for not drawing too much attention, but that's Levi for you, always the responsible adult. And he manages to save the kid, even after being assaulted by that clown earlier. The group runs away to safety, and the boy waves at them to thank them, but he also gets Levi's wallet. Of course, Levi is cool with that. If you're not a giant monkey, then you are pretty much safe from Levi. Here again, we see Eren is troubled by something, and Mikasa clearly is aware of that. From there we go to the Azumobito mansion to meet Kiyomi, the head of the clan. Here she confirms that there are indeed blood tests going around worldwide. More than 100 years ago, having Eldian blood was meant to be a proof of nobility and high status, but as the Eldian nation crumbled, those people were forced into exile, and some ended up in internment zones around the world. 
This was the fate of the Eldians that lived outside of the walls. Unlike the people of Paradis, the Eldians of the outside world have paid for the sins of their ancestors. In fact, they are still paying for them up until today. The fact that all subjects of Ymir are scattered like that and that people don't trust them is what makes it extremely hard to convince other countries to form friendly relations with Paradis. The other option the scouts have is to go with Zeke's plan. To remind you, this is before the Euthanasia plan was revealed, so Armin is referring to Zeke's original plan. The same plan that condemned Historia to keep making babies in order to keep the royal bloodline alive. That option is something Eren and the scouts don't accept. Hanji mentions the association to protect the subjects of Ymir. This association is about to hold an international forum and Hanji hopes they will share the same worldview as the people of the island. If they do, that would be an option for a diplomatic solution between the island and the rest of the world. Kiyomi claims she doesn't know exactly what the association stands for and we will get to that soon. At that point, Mikasa notices that Eren is not in the room with them. She meets up with him in the next scene, just as Eren seems to wipe his eyes. Have you been crying, Eren? I wouldn't spoil you too much, but I would say there are some missing scenes here which are all part of the next chapter called The Rumbling. And it shows Eren's little trip. No spoilers about that, but it does have something to do with this only frame we have from the next chapter. Mikasa sees the boy from the market at the camp and she asks Eren if something happened. To that he replies, not yet. Which is a pretty strange answer, don't you think? He then explains that all of those refugees are just like them. One day, their life changed and they lost their freedom. Everything was taken away from them. They have no freedom left, just like Eren and his friends were on that day when Shiganshina got attacked. And here comes probably one of the most important moments in this episode and this entire season when Eren finally asks Mikasa why does she care for him so much? What is he for her? So how important was this question? Let me share with you my reaction video. Yay! Yes! Thank you! The ending stays the same. Ah, thank you. So, for some context with no spoilers, this was exactly what Mikasa said in the manga. For some time now, there was a theory she might give a different answer, which would mean a possible different ending to the anime. So my reaction is simply me being thankful the story will go on as it did in the manga. Right after poor Mikasa gives a confused answer, they are interrupted by a nice old man offering them some tea. And right after that, the rest of the group arrives. And look at Eren's response here. Perfect timing. Again, a very strange thing to say. But we will get to that soon. The group being invited to celebrate with the refugees is what turns out to be one of the sweetest and most adorable scenes in Attack on Titan. Everyone is drinking together and the anime really did justice to this fun party. I mean, I don't think there is something more pure and sweet than Mikasa, Armin and Eren all laughing and drinking together. Plus, some underage drinking, but that's Sasha for you. I personally live in the Middle East, so I also really appreciated the music incorporated with the show original soundtrack. I also loved that everyone at that party was doing their own thing and Connie and Jean just keep on bringing more people to the party. Now you can see why Jean was so shocked when he realized all those people are going to die in the previous episode. This entire moment just further shows us why the scouts look at the outside world differently than other people. It's not necessarily because they are better people. It's mostly because they have got to witness the world from a different point of view. So now I have a question for you in the comments and think hard before you answer. Do you believe that if any of the Jaegerists got to experience the same thing the scouts did, would they maybe have a different outlook on this entire situation? This group are the only ones who got to experience the people of the outside world, unlike others like Flock for example who only witnessed the battlefield. The events of this episode are what gave our group a different perspective and also why they couldn't let all those people die later in the story. So let me know what you think in the comments. After all this drinking, Levi, Hanji and Unyan Kupon, the responsible adults, find everyone passed out on the 10th floor. 
I love how Eren fell asleep on Jean's face. And of course, also next to Mikasa, because he clearly hates her so much. The next day, the group attends to the forum Angie was talking about, but they face some bad news. So this forum supports the subjects of Ymir, but it also directs all the blame and hate on the people of the island. That proves to the scouts that there is really no option for peace with Marley, and that was also the moment Eren left them after he saw their last peaceful option was now gone. The next time they will meet him is when they will save him on Marley. We finally get to see the moment Eren's letters reached his friends, telling them he will follow Zeke's plan. In the manga, this was the end of the chapter, and we jumped straight to Eren's transformation on the island, with Mikasa wondering if things would have been different if she gave a different answer back then. We see the moment young Eren saved her, and the moment of his question from last night. In the anime, her dialogue jumps straight to the events of chapter 130, Dawn of Humanity, and also here, things were done a bit differently. In the manga, Eren's words go along with an image of him touching Historia in the medal ceremony, as he sees all those future memories. Eren wonders, where did it all start? Back on that tree? Or when Emir freed the pigs? Or maybe with this moment with Grisha? But it doesn't matter the place, because it was all that he wanted, and everything is still ahead. From then we jump to the moment Yelena met with Eren and tried to convince him to go with Zeke, while Flock listening to their conversation. We then jump between the time Eren told his plan to Flock and to Historia, telling both he is going to destroy the world. Historia is willing to do whatever it takes to save their island, but she couldn't live with herself if she didn't try to stop him from hurting innocent people. He tells her she needs to be quiet for now. She can do it, just like she saved him back then in the cave, when she acted, according to her own words, like the worst girl in the world. She then asks Eren what about her having a baby. Just to make things clear, she's not suggesting she and Eren will have a baby, she's offering a solution to their current problem. And that was indeed effective, as we remember the fact that she was pregnant is what made the military police to not go ahead with their plan, fearing the chance they will lose the only royal blood member alive. That was actually Niall's argument that was shown to us in the episode A Sound Argument. We then jump between the meeting with Historia to Zeke and Eren having their chat on Marley, and to one of the most important issues of this episode. Eren asks Zeke about Mikasa's headaches, and Zeke confirms that he has never heard about that before. It's not an actual thing. The Ackermans are not programmed to serve the host. This is important for several reasons. It finally confirms that Eren was really lying to Mikasa when he told her that, and he did that in order to keep her away. That means that Mikasa was never a slave to her bloodline, and it also means there is a different reason for Mikasa's actions. A reason much more simple according to Zeke. She simply loves Eren so much that she would do anything for him. But when Zeke asks what will Eren's response be, Eren's response is, what are you talking about? I have only four more years to live. They will live long after I die. I just want them to have long, happy lives. This is what Eren wanted. Simply for his friends to have a happy life without war or hate in their lifetime. He is no longer considering himself as a factor because, as he just said, he has only four more years to live, so his wish now is to secure a future for the people close to him. In the background, we see what Eren has been doing after he left the group on that day. And in an amazing scene with amazing music background, we see the moment Eren took out his own leg and eye on the battlefield. He did that so he could pass on as a wounded Eldian soldier and gain access to Liberio internment zone. I mean, it looked painful in the manga, but it looks so much more painful in the anime. As we hear Eren's true intentions, we also get a beautiful shot of his friends from years back. And right from there, we jump straight to the current events, to humanity's last line of defense. On Marley, forces from all over the world have joined forces in order to stop the rumbling. They have pretty much all the artillery from all the neighboring countries, so if this can't stop the rumbling, then this is the end for humanity. 
They shoot a few rounds that take down a few titans underground, but soon after the titans swim under the boats, setting them on fire from the heat of their steam, and then rising from the water in front of the rest of the terrified soldiers. After the line of defense is broken, the rest of the soldiers run away in fear, and we get a very similar shot of when the colossal titan attacked Shiganshina. Some soldiers look back and see Eren's giant deformed titan as they scream in fear. It's him. It's the attack titan. And two major things here. First, the symbolism of Eren's titan is amazing. He is supposed to represent freedom, but ironically, his titan is a giant puppet on strings, making you wonder who is in charge of this entire show. The second thing is that his titan is hanging upside down, which of course reminds us of Upside Down Eren from season 1, but more symbolically, it also represents the fallen angel, the angel that fell from grace. And knowing this fight will later be called the Battle of Heaven and Earth, you can see that symbolism was not by accident. And this amazing episode ends with the titan reaching Marley with Eren's famous words in the background. I will destroy them. Every last one of them. An iconic line we heard numerous times across the show when Eren referred to the Titans, but the cruel irony of it is that this sentence wasn't destined for the Titans. It was always destined for the entire human race. The episode ends without the closing theme, only showing an image of the group standing inside a giant Titan footprint with a message from NHK that Attack on Titan will come back next year. First, let me remind you that I also have a website and blog now, so check it out for more updates about Attack on Titan, different anime, and more fun stuff. I also blogged about artists in my Facebook group, and it's going to be a regular thing, so if you're an artist, come share your work, and I will do my best to help you get more exposure. And lastly, I would like to inform you about a very special video that I'm working on, one that I waited years to share, and it is my personal and completely original way to explain Mikasa, combining physics and philosophy in a beautiful way to bring you an original idea with an extra twist you have never seen before on YouTube. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe and to turn on all notifications to be informed about that and about more videos and live streams scheduled on my channel. And that is all for this video, my titan-loving friends, and I will see you all real soon in my next video, and even sooner in the comments. But until then, don't forget to always dedicate your hearts to humanity, inside and outside the walls.